Good morning, Power Online. Amen. We can do nothing without them. I said we can do nothing without them. Amen. Do I have a witness that we can do nothing without the presence of the Lord? Hallelujah. Amen. He's worthy of all the praise. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. God, for your loving kindness and your tender mercy, God, toward us. God, we thank you, God, for this is the day, God, that you have made. God, we have determined to rejoice and to be glad in it. God, we thank you, God, for the gift of today, God, for the presence of today, God. God, we thank you, God, right now in the name of Jesus, God, for a reasonable portion of health and strength. God, we thank you, God, right now in the name of Jesus, God, for waking us up this morning, understanding it wasn't an alarm clock. God, we thank you, God, but it was your finger of love that touched us on this morning and woke us up, God, and we thank you, God, right now in the name of Jesus. God, for allowing us to see this day, God. God, we thank you on today, God, for our circle was not broken. Uh, God, we thank you on today, God. No one had to wheel us in here. God, we thank you, God. God, our tongue can cleave to the roof of our mouth. Uh, God, we thank Thank you for life, health, and strength, God, activities of our limbs. Uh, God, we thank you for clothes and shelter. God, we thank you for friends and family. God, we thank you, God, for every good and perfect gift comes from you. Uh, God, there is nothing we are not thankful for, God. God, we thank you because we will bless you at all times. Uh, and our praise will continually be in your mouth. Uh, in our mouth, God, we thank you, God, on today, God. God, for everything you have done. Uh, and God, everything you are going to do. Uh, God, we bless you and we praise you, uh, God, for what you have done to us and through us. Uh, God, we thank you uh, for down to, through the years. Uh, God, you've been good to us. Uh, God, you brought us through every mountain. Uh, God, you've seen us through every valley. Uh, God, you've seen us through every problem, every storm, uh, and every situation. Uh, God, you are a great and good God. Uh, God, we thank you uh, for being all powerful. Uh, God, you were more powerful than anything that ever came up against us uh, for when the enemy came in like a flood uh, God you raised up a standard against the enemy uh, and God we thank you all today uh, for being Jehovah Gabor uh, the one that wars for us uh, God we thank you uh, all we have to do is stand still uh, and see the salvation of God God we thank you uh, God we thank you uh, God, for every situation, for every problem, uh, God, you find a way to get the glory out of it. Uh, God, we thank you. Uh, God, we should be to, to the praise of your glory. God, we are instruments of your glory. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, uh, we make up in our mind. Uh, we set our hearts and our spirits. Uh, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, uh, that in this, on this day, uh, in this place, uh, and in this tabernacle, that you get all the praise, uh, that you get all the glory, uh, and that you get all the honor. God, we decree in this place uh, salvation, healing, deliverance, and salvation uh, in this place. Uh, God, we thank you, God. God, right now in the name of Jesus uh, for what you're going to do in this place. Uh, God, we praise you in advance uh, for what you would do to us. Uh, God, we praise you in advance uh, for what you would do for our neighbors. Uh, God, right now in the name of Jesus, uh, we put a praise on it even now. Uh, God, the things that you would do for us. Uh, God, the problems you're working out right here uh, and right now, God. God, even while we're in your temple. Huh? You are back home working out situations. Huh? God, so we give you praise, honor, and glory. Huh? God, we don't worry. Huh? We worship. Huh? We don't worry about problems. Huh? We praise. Huh? God, we thank you huh? for a praising people, for a worshiping people. God, we thank you on today. Huh? You get all the praise all of the honor and all of the glory come on everybody everywhere come on put your hands together open up your mouth and bless the Lord your God come on you can do a little better than that come on open up your mouth and bless him come on open up your mouth and bless him come on give him praise give him praise come on you can be a little louder than that Hallelujah. We're louder than that at the football game. Come on, open up your mouth uh, and bless the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Uh, hallelujah. We argue louder than that. Come on, open up your mouth for the King. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, for 
every mountain uh, you brought us over uh, for every problem you seen us through uh, God we thank you uh, God we bless you uh, we magnify your name come on put your hands together everybody come on put your hands together now open up your mouth and tell them thank you hallelujah these are the prayers of your people thus far the prayers of your people Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands. Hallelujah. And say something wonderful to the God of your salvation. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. Anybody got the testimony that the Lord God we serve is so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord. Oh my soul. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
can't stop dancing. I can't stop dancing. Giving to good Lord. Hallelujah. I can't stop praising. I can't stop praising. Giving to good Lord. Hallelujah. I can't stop praising. I can't stop dancing. Giving to good Lord. Hallelujah. Giving to good Lord. Giving to good Lord. Oh, oh, oh. giving to good Lord. And we give you praise. Giving to good Lord. For all you've done, we, we give you praise, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. we give you praise, Lord. Oh, you've been too good. You've been too good, Lord. You've been too good, Lord. You've been too good, Lord. You've been too good. You've been too good, Lord. You've been too good, Lord. You've been too good, Lord. You've been too good. You've been too good, Lord. You've been too good, Lord. Oh, Lord, you're worthy of the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy of the glory. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy of the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. Been too good, Lord. You've been too good, Lord. Oh, you've been too good, Lord. You've been too good. I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, and know that is within me, bless his oh, holy. Magnify his name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. He's great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah, Jesus. He's been too good. Hallelujah, Jesus. Better than us than we learn to be to ourselves. Hallelujah, Jesus. And we give you great praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. and help me sing thank you thank you Lord I thank you Lord oh I thank thank you Just want to thank 
having so you know that you know that it was nobody but the Lord I don't care what the doctor said what type of medication they gave you what kind of surgery they recommended who came through in the midnight hour at the end of the day it was all the Lord now I need somebody in this place that showed up on the fifth Sunday morning in January hallelujah year that somebody told you you might not have made it to and open up your mouth hallelujah and help me charge this atmosphere with some praise to the Lord God we serve the one that healed your body the one that saved your soul the one that kept your children the one that kept your mind the one that kept your body the one that carried you day to day when nothing else could help it was a little Jesus hallelujah that lifted you now open up your mouth people of God and act like you serve a God 
that sits high and look low even in your lowest moment he's still lifted even in your lowest time he's still covered even in the greatest pain in your body he still brought peace when you didn't know how the way was going to be made and you still don't know how it's going to be made but you serve a god hallelujah that's able to do anything but fail come on and give him great glory not because i asked you to but because you know he's worthy hallelujah jesus Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. You ought to have a reason to want to bless God. David, the psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. He woke you up this morning. That's enough. I'm going to say that again. He woke you up this morning. That should be enough. He woke you up this morning. That should be enough. We ought to be to the point as believers of God where we don't need anyone to stimulate us with enticing words or try to encourage us to do something that we were created to do. I don't need nobody to tell me to clap my hands. I don't need nobody to tell me to stand on my feet. I don't need nobody to tell me to praise God. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, uh, I would submit to you all this morning, there comes a time in all of our walks where you've got to make this thing personal. Amen. Amen. Mama may have and Papa may have, but God bless the child that's got his own. There's going to come a time in your walk with God where you're going to tell everybody else, excuse me, I got to get this for myself. Hallelujah. We honor God. We thank God for all of you that are here. Amen. If you're first time here, we bless God for you. Amen. If you're on the feed, we bless God for you too. Amen. Uh, I want to get right into the Word of God today because uh, I just want to get into the Word of God today. Amen. Amen. And let us go to the Gospel according to St. John. The Gospel according to St. John, uh, the fifth chapter. Just in in way of announcements, uh, Thursday, we will be back here having Bible study on Thursdays, prayer and Bible study uh, every Thursday, unless otherwise noted. Uh, whether I'm here or not, the church doors will be open. Yeah, yeah. I got two amens, and I'm not I'm not gonna say what I felt in my spirit. So y'all was thinking in your mind uh, but 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 we, we've got to be more mature songwriter said I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord. God forbid because my prayer mother Walker is that I live to be at least 106 but God forbid I die tonight what y'all gonna do God forbid I die tonight. What you gonna do? You still got to go on. If I'm not here on Thursday, somebody ought to have something to say. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Somebody ought to know how to pray. It's quiet in here. Somebody said, get on with the message. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, y'all be forgetting I can tap in, y'all. Be forgetting I can tap in. Gospel according to St. John, the fifth chapter, starting at the first verse. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up into Jerusalem. 
Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatever disease they had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him and said, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. You may be seated. The word of God is blessed. I want to preach this morning from the subject, Wilt Thou Be Made Whole? Please, uh, Elder Short, uh, please, uh, 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 Sister Linda, please forgive me because I know um, from a homiletic, homonunic perspective, I should not give the title of my message in the form of a question. So please forgive me. Uh, Father, amen. Uh, but wilt thou be made whole? And for the last couple of Sundays, we have been preaching from the contextual uh, presentation about abiding in the vine. Uh, it is my desire as we move forward in this next season of God that the people of God draw closer to who he is. I got it. Mm -hmm. It is my desire that as we move forward in our lives in this next season, the people of God will draw closer to who he is. When you draw closer to who he is, then you'll understand what he has for your life. I'm going to get in trouble today, so y'all just buckle your seatbelts. Uh, the African American Pentecostal Apostolic Church has done us wrong for years, and we expect the Europeans and the Anglo-Saxons to give us reparations, but the church should give us reparations as well. Mm -hmm. The church has led us to believe uh, that we can live in misery to die to get to a place called heaven that uh, floweth with milk and honey and has streets that's paved with, with gold. But according to Jesus, Jesus said you can have all that right here on earth. Mm -hmm. And we're so caught up in shouting and dancing and speaking in tongues and being miserable and being broke and being disgusted and being frustrated and being depressed in the name of a praise that we have missed out on the totality of God. You're not going to talk back to me today, but it's okay. God wants us to be whole. Are y'all with me? Uh, so, so I want to make sure uh, my presentation was intact uh, because whole, uh, Elder Pat, has many different definitions. Whole has many different connotations. So I want to make sure uh, we have clarity this morning on where it is I am going. According to Webster, Webster defines whole as compromising the full quality, amount, or extent, containing all the elements properly belonging, undivided in one place. Um, but, but for the sake of time this morning, I want to use this definition. Whole means not broken, damaged, or impaired. Whole, for the sake of this sermonic presentation, simply means not broken, not damaged, or impaired. And most pastors in America owe the body of Christ an apology because we're trying to point you to heaven while you're still broken, damaged, and impaired. We don't care how broke you are as long as you praise and give a gold envelope. Y'all not going to talk back to me here today. As long as you put a butt in a seat, put a dollar in an envelope, and you move when the music is played, we say we're on our way to heaven and so glad. 
but we've got people from the pulpit to the door that are dealing with suicidal thoughts, depressed minds, and we cloak it under a 30-second praise. But God is saying in this next season, you've got to make up in your mind that you have a desire to be whole. You've got to make up in your mind that you have a desire to abide in the vine. When you abide in the vine, and we come to understand the last couple of weeks, that the, 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 the vine, if it does not produce, then it has to be cut off. If the vine is not whole or intact, then it's incapable or improbable of producing fruit. Are y'all with me this morning? So I don't want to be connected to anything that I cannot produce. I'm just going to talk a little bit today. I don't want to be connected to nothing that I cannot produce. God didn't create me to be stagnant. This is good preaching today. I said God didn't, God didn't create me to just go through life uh, um, uh, just by happenstance. But there is purpose and a plan to my life. And I need the purpose of God and the plan of God to be revealed in my life so that God can get the glory out of my life. If I never dance again, I've got to walk in what God has for me. I'm trying to behave myself here this morning, but, but we've got to do away with traditional mindset and modality of thinking. And I ain't got nothing to do with what no other church does, but I'm just talking about the church that I pastor. We have gotten to somehow, some way, ask the God of our salvation to help us do away with the traditional mode of thinking. We look for prophecy like a drug addict chases a high. We chasing what God has said when all that a prophetic word is, is nothing more than a manifestation of what he has already said concerning your life. And if you read your Bible, you will find out that all that the prophetic word is, is nothing more than the words that's on the Bible coming out of a man or woman's mouth. Y'all ain't talking back to me. I guess y'all want me to go to Hoopville. But God said we ain't no time for Hoopville right now. He's trying to get us into heaven. I believe that God is raising up a remnant of people who have a desire to please him, but are confused on what it takes to please him. I believe that God is, in fact, raising up a remnant of people uh, that don't um, do it quite like we do it. And y'all know we're wrong. Y'all know we're wrong that if folk don't do it like we do it, we make them feel uncomfortable. Folk don't do it like we do it. We make them feel like they're not welcome at this part of our vineyard. They're not, they're not of this tribe. Other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, you know, because, because you don't shout and speak in front of them. Messiah. You don't do that. We make them feel like, like uh, they don't belong here. Oh, yeah, I'm going to preach myself happy today. We've had people come to power and praise that, that have came out of the um, Presbyterian church, the Lutheran church, and, and so forth and so on. And because they did yeah, yeah. We treated them like they were lepers. Yeah. We didn't speak to them. We, they, we acted like they had a scarlet letter on their chest. But people who... Who did what we did, we conjugated to them. And those were the biggest liars. Mm -hmm, the biggest, uh, you know, <laughs> because they did what we did. We just thought they were like we are. And after you got deep into a relationship, you come to realize they are the biggest demon in the church. Y'all ain't talking back to me. So the question once again this morning is, will thou be made whole? This is not a touch your neighbor message. This is not a high five your neighbor. This is a message of self 
reflection. This is a, a, a message that, that I need to get a, a, a mirror and look myself in the mirror. Because it amazes me, Martina Duffy, how we know what God has for everybody else. But we fail to tap into what God has for me. Oh, we prophesy, Mother Loper, to everybody what God got for them. You know, God showed me in a dream on Wednesday night, you you came to me. You, you know, Dickie Rocky, God showed me last Sunday morning. But, but when it comes to what God is showing you. You get amnesia. Because one thing I know about God, God ain't never going to come to you for somebody else until he come to you for yourself first. You got to be, this is some good preaching, Bishop. You've got to be the first partaker. And we've got people hiding their dysfunction behind prophecy. And I don't know who's worse, the person receiving the prophecy or the one giving the prophecy. I just want to holler one time. Try the spirit by the spirit that it is of God. I know some folk that got married to folk they shouldn't have been married to because the pastor said God said. God ain't going to tell you marry nobody ugly. Hallelujah. Y'all ain't talking back to me today. I love us. I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just saying. And uh, being ugly is subjective. Being ugly is subjective. Y'all might say I'm ugly. That's all right. That's all right. It's ugly is subjective. Yeah, 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 yeah. But are y'all with me this morning? We are doing things based on what someone said. And not what God has said. Now watch this. When we do what God has said, it makes it easier to do what the man or woman of God has said. But we're raising up a generation of minions, broke leaders, congregate toward broken people in the name of God. And don't produce anything but more broken people. Because you do know you 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 do reproduce after your own kind. Bro broke people don't produce healed people. Broke people don't produce uh, stable people. That's why you always find yourself around the kind of people that you find yourself around because I hate to say it like this, you broken and don't realize you're broken. People that are whole don't put up with broke things. Yeah, I got your mind today. Could it be that I'm broken? Because I allow myself to continue to put up with stuff that I would normally not put up with. Oh, I got the, I, I got, can, have I hit a nerve yet? Because some of y'all, some of y'all have got to help me because uh, I don't understand how much of a fighter you was in the world. But then you come to church and you punk up. Y'all got to help me. How much of a, how much of a, what you was when you was what you was. But now you come to church and just because somebody don't speak to you, you depressed and ready to leave the church. Now, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand this kind of perspective. If you didn't take no stuff in the world, then surely y'all not take no stuff. If you was confrontational in the world then surely you ought to. I got Bible to back me up. I got the, Bible. the Bible says, come let us reason together. Confrontation sometimes is good. Anger. But sin not. We can have conversation. Because in conversation, understanding.
understanding is produced. What I need from you is understanding. Y'all know that song? Shh. I'm trying to get y'all in that heaven. Wilt thou be made whole? This, this, this text this text this morning, I've, I've preached this uh, several times over the years, uh, but, but I, I saw something even in the text last night that I never saw before. This is why you can't just read the word of God and not have the Holy Ghost. You need the deutimous power of the Holy Ghost because it will draw out things at certain times that God wants you to see. It will illuminate things at certain times, and other times it will hide things. Y'all ain't walking with me this morning. That's what the Holy Ghost does. So, 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 so this morning, for the sake of uh, 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 exegetical exactitude, we want the people of God to understand that, 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 that John is the writer of this particular passage of Scripture. Now, no one must understand, Deacon Rock, you old... Uh, um, no football name team having fan. Uh, uh, John, shh, John is, is, is different uh, than the other three Gospels. You have Matthew, Mark, you have Luke, and you have John. You have uh, three synoptic Gospels and you have one didactic Gospel. A uh, synoptic Gospel is a man's account of something from afar. Didactic is a more interpersonal relationship by knowing them from a different perspective. Everyone in this room right now has a synoptic person, a uh, 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 perspective on who uh, Carlos Cannon is. But Lady Cannon has a more didactic perspective of who I am because she knows me. She, see, y'all don't see me at 3 o'clock in the morning. When I'm in the bed, just up looking at the sky, I mean, looking at the ceiling, uh, uh, and, and, and get to praying for folk and, you know, praying frustration off of me. Y'all just see when I come to make you happy. But she knows me when I'm frustrated. And, and she knows the difference in being frustrated and being angry. Uh, so she can speak on things that others can't. This is why it's important for us to know God or know Jesus, if you will, from a didactic place and not a synoptic place. Yeah. Somebody say, what do you mean, Pastor? Do you mean by- I'm so glad you asked. From a synoptic place, you have relationship with Jesus based on what your mom and them said. But from a didactic place, you have a relationship with Jesus for yourself. I know for myself that he is a healer. See, most of us that had never been sick, we only have heard of the testimonies of some of the members of power and praise on how when they were sick, God healed them. So we know him to be a healer because we know Brother Steve wouldn't tell a lie. Brother Brother Steve going to tell the truth, even if it hurts your feelings. Hallelujah. But if you've been sick, you now have a didactic relationship with Jesus Christ because it was you laying flat on your back being test run and poked and prodded. And it was God that came in and touched your body when the doctor said they didn't know what in the world was going on. So John here writes from a different perspective. He writes from a perspective of being more personal with Jesus Christ. And I'm going to try to holler in a minute, but for, but I, I just don't feel like hollering this morning, if it's all right. Uh, John, John, John writes because he spent time with him. And I've got to submit to every one of you in here, if we're going to abide in the vine, and if we're going to be whole, we have to spend time with the master. And I got to say this, spending time an uh, hour or two on Thursday night, two hours on Sunday morning, and 15, 20 minutes on Monday morning ain't enough time. You've got to talk to him. My grandmother said, uh, take the Lord God with you, baby. Everywhere you go. You, you, got to, you got to take him everywhere. Take him to the Walmart. It'd be COVID in the Walmart. You got to take the Lord with you. Because if you don't take the Lord with you, somebody might cough. 
my mic is my mic is something I don't know. Somebody might cough and 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 and, and it, the stuff come out their mouth and because you ain't got Jesus with you, it gets up in your nostril. And then you laid on your bed of affliction because you got the COVID because you didn't take the Lord God with you everywhere you go. But if you take the Lord God with you, somebody, <coughs> the dunamis power of God through the blood of Jesus will cover you. Y'all ain't talking back to me. So let me get to the text here this morning. We find, we find the setting, uh, Lexi, of this text in Bethesda. Bethesda means house of grace or house of mercy. Come on, say that with me. Say house of grace or house of mercy. Thank you. Grace is unmerited favor extended for the things you don't deserve. Mercy is compassion extended for the things you do. Let me see if I can explain this a little better. Uh, grace, according to the definition, is unmerited favor extended for the things you don't deserve. <sighs> unmerited favor, meaning favor that's about to take place on your life, uh, you don't deserve, but happens anyway. Can I just say it like I want to say it? Yeah. The, baby, the baby said, yeah? yeah. All right. Uh, you had protected sex. And the protection broke. But you didn't get a disease. And you didn't produce life. That's great. I said you had protected sex. Shouldn't have been having it nowhere. Let me put that part out there. Ha, ta, 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 ta. You should have went home after the movies in the first place. Unmerited favor extended for the things you don't deserve. That means even in my mess, God looked out. You might not be having sex, but you're doing something. And can everybody in here testify that you thank God for the grace of God? He looked out for me. I feel like preaching what he shouldn't have. Grace of God. It's unmerited favor. I don't know why he looks out for me like he does. I don't know why every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. Because he's trying to get your attention. But he wants you to know that there is more in store for your life. And then we have mercy. Mercy is nothing more than compassion extended for the things you do deserve. Mercy. Mercy. I'm, mercy, mercy me. I'm, I'm doing the best I can. Sometimes I feel like my best is not good enough. Yes, 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 yes. Mercy lets a single parent raise her children when sometimes there's no more money in the bank. My uncle, my uncle, my uncle, uh, my uncle, I believe he was, my uncle was a little touched. Yeah, um, yeah. Why y'all look at me funny when I talk about my family? Y'all talk about your family every day. Some of y'all need to stop that stuff. Y'all talk about your family all the time. I only talk about mine on Sundays. But my uncle, my, my middle uncle, Kendall, 
he, he, would, he would write stuff on the walls of his house. You walk in his house right now, it's like a, like a book. You can just read. Just, he would have philosophical stuff that he write. And I remember as a child, one thing he wrote on the wall, he said, how uh, can one make ends meet when there's no meat on either end? That was powerful, wasn't it? Is that dope? <laughs> How can some of y'all in this room right now do some of the things that you've done with what has been afforded to your life? Some of you in here, and I'm trying to behave myself, but some of you in here have raised children that, 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 that have, have done the best you can. Sometimes it was hard, but you were able to keep them out of trouble. Hallelujah. It's because the mercy of God has been applied to your life. This is why we come to church every Sunday, because uh, if grace don't catch it, mercy will. That's why every Sunday you got to get up and be excited about getting in the house of God, because somewhere between invocation and benediction, God has something for your life. So they're at this place called Bethesda. They're at this pool. They're they're at this place where, where uh, this particular gate, uh, 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 people with conditions find themselves. The scripture says that there are impotent, blind, halt, and withered people waiting for a season where the God of their salvation through the dunamis power of the Holy Ghost troubles the water. And if you get in the water first, you'll be healed of whatever impairment you have. Yeah. Kind of like if we all come to church and the first one that prays uh, uh, get healed. Aren't you glad that we don't have to uh, 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 chase to be the first? Aren't you glad that you can come to church and praise God right in your seat? Aren't you, aren't you glad that you can come to church and it's not a competition? Because the same God that can bless me in Magnolia, my God today, can be the same God that can be in Slaughter Neck, can be in Bridgeville. I ain't got no help here today. Aren't you glad that we don't have to run to be the first? You can just wait on God to move. But here we find impotent folk, blind folk, halt. And withered folk waiting on God to move. Impotent folk are nothing more than people that lack physical strength and ability. They're helpless. Blind folk lack the sense of sight, especially beyond what is accepted or expected as normal. Halt folk lack the ability or unable to stand directly uh, and move lame and unable to progress. Withered folk become shrunken or wrinkled from age or disease. Doesn't that sound like the church? We come here Sunday after Sunday with a need for God to touch us and have his way. We come to the church uh, with our hands lifted up in anticipation that God is going to do something for our lives. We now find Jesus, this happens to be the Sabbath, walking upon these people, and he sees this particular individual. The text lets us know that he has been brought here for 38 years. Now, I have trouble here with the text. The text says that someone brought this person to the pool. And for 38 years, they had to watch everybody else get what they need to get from God. Long time. 38 years. 
First of all, I have trouble with the text because don't nobody stay in church longer than 38 months. I was trying to be nice. 38 years. My God. 38 years. Can you imagine coming to power and praise for 38 years? Hold on. One thousand nine hundred and seventy six Sundays. Three thousand nine hundred and fifty two uh, opportunities if you add Thursday night. Well, some of y'all don't come, so let me go back. <laughs> One thousand nine hundred and seventy six times. Do I come to church and the music is playing, prayer has been prayed, songs are being sung, and the water gets troubled. Healing takes place, and I got to sit back and watch it. And there is nothing I can do but watch people get what they need. And I'm still struggling. How would you feel? Especially if the ones you see are the ones that brought you. I don't have time today. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be more cognizant of time. But, 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 but most of the time, we've got to sit back and watch folk that brought us. You told me about the church. You told me about the leader. You told me about the power of God. And I watch you. But I can't get what I need to get. Can I say it and you don't get offended? The reason why I can't get what I need to get is because I'm still watching you. Well, I'm watching you when the water's troubled but I'm watching you in the water still. And I see all that you're doing when the music is jumping. And I see all you doing when the organ is turned off. And the reason why some folk can't tap into God is because they're not whole. Somebody say what you mean. I'm so glad you asked. Being whole suggests, man, I don't care what they do. I got to get what I got to get from God. Being whole suggests, you might have brought me here. But there comes a time, baby, when I got to walk off by myself. I feel like preaching today. Being whole suggests I don't wake up 7 o'clock in the morning and get on the phone and call to see who's going to come to church. I wake up and jump in the shower and get excited just to get to church. Because I, the hell of a week that I had, if I can just get to church, get to the house of God, I know somehow, some way, things are going to get better. Jesus now has this conversation with this particular individual and he asks this one question wilt thou be made whole okay anybody mad at me yet go on well well since you ain't mad now you better get mad now because because here's where here is, here is what God showed me last night. Um, Jesus asked the question, right? Yeah. Cleo, can you put the scripture back up? Because I, 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 no, I don't want no smoke from nobody. I don't want nobody saying I'm adding to. Uh, give, me, give me verse 6 and 7, if you can. 
Okay? Uh, Y'all read it with me. Verse 6, read. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, what did he say? That's a question, right? One, two, three, four, five. A five-worded question. Now watch this. The maker whole person is the one asking the question. The healer of all manner of disease is asking the question. What is the response? And the impotent man answered him and said, But here is here is here is here is what I find wrong with these scriptures. Number one, you don't even realize who you're talking to. Number one, and number two. He asked the question, and you gave an excuse. Oh, y'all mad now. When, when, he, when Jesus asked the question of you, he already know what you have need of even before he asked. But we busy making excuses why we ain't got what he is capable of giving. He said, will you be made whole? All the man had to do was say, yep. I've been waiting on you. <laughs> Where you been? The man in the text, oh, man. Right here. Here's the problem that I have with folk that are 50 and younger. Here's the problem I have with folk that hand clap, tongue talk, shouting all the time, the folk that always on social media trying to be prophetic, and you pathetic. Here's the problem I have. Here's the problem I have. What was the question? Who are we talking to? Right. He answered him, correct? What's the first? I have no man. No. Why are we quick? Why are we quick to blame our dysfunction on somebody else? Why you come to church late? I ain't get up on time, on alarm clock, but you go to work five days a week. On time. You stay late. But you complain. I, I, I don't even know why I look that way. I'm sorry. It was just a force of habit. I, just, I was going this way. I just, you know. Some of us come early. <laughs> and some of us stay late. <laughs> when you find yourself in trouble, the first thing most of us do is blame somebody else for our dysfunction. Rather than you saying, thank God that for 38 years somebody loved me enough to bring me here, you want to blame folk for not Pushing you in. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me here today. Somebody can bring you to the house of God. But you've got to have responsibility. That when you get to the house. You get what you need from God. For yourself. As for me in my house. Sir I have no man. When the water's trouble. Woe is me. 
nobody know the trouble I see. Nobody know the trouble you see and you're looking right at Jesus. We've been shouting and dancing in the church too long for some of us to still be broken. Y'all ain't going to talk back and it's fine. We've been coming to church for too long and for some of us to still be in the state that we in. Yes, I'm talking to y'all in the church and I'm talking to some of y'all low key ones that be getting on the stream acting like you don't fool with me too. I'm talking to everybody. Get yourself together. Because you know that's what some folk do talk about they don't fool with power and praise the Bishop Cannon but they, be in, they, be, they, they watch every Sunday. Oh, I'm going to call it out in this season. I'm going to call it out in this season. Mm-mm, you ain't going to, uh-uh, mm-mm, 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 you ain't going to midnight rambler me. Mm, only come around when the sun go down. He took no responsibility for himself. That's what Broken people do. Broken people, miserable people, look for company. I know I'm wrong, but so is Toya. I know I messed up, but Anitra did too. Oh, did you hear her say she don't go to work on time? But we're not talking about punctuality in the workplace. Am I doing all right? He, he shuns responsibility. I ain't going to bed till 4 o'clock this morning. This thing messing me up. Will thou be made whole? Five-worded question. Yes, sir. sir, I have no man when the water's trouble. You could have just left for that. I have no man. And then we could have found a man. I have no ride to church. Oh, we'll get you a ride. I ain't got nothing to wear. Oh, we'll buy you something to wear. Uh huh. See, see, we don't like short responses because we know that a good sir or ma'am will eliminate the excuses. Somewhere between sir and the comma. 28 years of being in this condition, began to stimulate the mind of the man. He said, I have no man. When the water is trouble, to put me in the pool. That would have been an adequate response in itself. But conjunction, junction. But while I am coming, another step down. Are y'all extracting from the text what I'm extracting? Now, now, if you had just left it at, sir, I have no man when the water's trouble to put me in the pool, period. Cleo, we could work with that. But now you want to add to it. But, but while I am coming, Another step is down before me. Now, here's, here's the problem that I have with the text. Here's the problem that I have with the text. You are talking to the one that can fix the problem. But you are adding to the problem. Jesus talks to the man individually. The man should respond to Jesus individually. But he now brings others into the equation. 
That's why I keep telling you, you better watch who you hang with. You better watch who you conjugate with. Because folk that you have brought to Jesus is going to be the same ones that's going to rat you out to Jesus when it's time for responsibility to take place. He says, I have no man when the water's trouble to put me in. You pulled on the emotions of man, but didn't realize you was talking to the deity of God. But while I am coming. So now you're trying to muddy the water and you don't turn your muddiness into a blatant lie. <laughs> Another step down before me. You mean to tell me in 38 years you ain't figured out how to trip nobody? that's going into the water. In 38 years, you ain't devised a plan. 38 years, you ain't figured out how to roll to the edge of the water. Now, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother y'all with the lie because most theologians lead us to believe that this per particular person was paralyzed. Are you with me? See, every now and then I gotta show y'all I know some biblical uh, presentation. You know, most folk would lead us to believe that this man was paralyzed. So if in fact this man was paralyzed, a paralytic state simply means I can't move at all. If I'm paralyzed, I can't move. I need someone to do everything for me. Are we in agreement? Type it in the chat if you agree. Say, I agree, Bishop, I agree. So if we, we all agree, ah, if we all agree that this paralytic man can't move, then why would you lie to Jesus and say, but while I am coming? Why do we come to church every Sunday lying about the condition that we're in? If you lie, say you lie. Scripture says let them that lie, lie no more. It wouldn't be in there if it didn't acknowledge the fact that people lie. Let them that steal, steal no more. It wouldn't be in there if it didn't acknowledge that folk got sticky hands. Jesus trying to take care of business and you trying to live under a cloak. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And I got to wrap it up. I'll pick it up next week. But ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just want to be in the church. You just want to be around the music. You just want to be around folk. Because you know if you're around blessings, some blessings are going to find you. No, and in this season, baby, you got to get your own blessing. In this season, you got to get your own deliverance. Y'all ain't going to help me. In this season, you got to get your own breakthrough. Stop trying to be around folk that got it so you can get some residual. I don't want no residual. I want what God got for me. I can't even get to my points. I'm trying. I know y'all don't know nobody like this. I know y'all don't know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get to the place where I can stop and pick it up next week. But I have no man come when the water's trouble. The more I look at this thing, the more Holy Ghost give me revelation. Yeah. I have no man should have been a period, not a comma. Because the question was, will thou be made whole? It should have been like, I ain't got nobody. Comma. No, you want to run the sentence on. When the water's trouble. Period. Why are you talking about the water being trouble? To the troubler of the water. You, 
you, you, you're talking about the water being troubled to the one that got the power to make the water trouble. Comma, should have been a period. To put me in the pool, colon. We got one, two, three. We got three excuses already from one question. That's going to be the message I'm going to preach. Three answers to one question. Three, no. What was that movie, uh, Three Men and a Baby? Yeah. No, my, my message is going to be, my message is going to be three answers and a lie. I have no man when the water's trouble to put me in. The, the lie, but while I'm coming. You're paralyzed. How can you come? Yeah. Yep. And another... Step down, okay. I'm, I'm, I, uh, one of y'all brothers, do me a favor. Go around to the side door and, and, and tap on it once when you get there. When I, listen, when I tap back, beat on it three times, okay? Every time somebody come out, wait three seconds and beat on it again, all right? You try to figure out where we're going to go. They both, they both bag it up. Give me four volunteers. Come here, come here, Lester. Come on. Yup, you, come on. Yup, matter of fact, all four of y'all. Y'all, you able-bodied people. I'll pick, y'all just stand right there. I'll pick this up next week. I'll pick it up next week. But I got to lay foundation because this is why people can't get hold. We busy making excuses on why we can't get whole when we come to the person that has the capacity to make us whole. We're busy lying on why we can't get whole. And if we come to ourselves and be honest, listen, okay, so. Mm. <laughs> we all at the pool. All with it. <laughs> all of us. Y'all got issues to the bishues. But we at the pool, waiting on, on it to get. Knock again, I say. Going out there. And then just come on, go on around and come on back to your seat. No, no, go out the door. That's, that's one year, right? Now, now, mind you, hold on one second, G. Can you hear me, G? Okay. Now, mind you, that's one year, right? We here for a whole other year. We started out as strangers. Now we're friends. <laughs> How you doing? Man, where you come from? What kind of chicken you like eating? You, you, you see, misery love company. For a whole year, we now in this state. And this is why you got to be careful to focus in the same condition as you because you'll find yourself still in that state. Be huh. Knock, knock again, G. Now, this is me. This is what, this year three, right? I'm start. I got a problem. I'm sitting up here doing all this talking, all this fellowshipping. Can we have more party at the pool? But every year, somebody leaving. Now, if I, if I know the rules of engagement is when I hear the knock, whoever the first one in the pool, don't go nowhere yet. When I hear the knock, whoever the first one in is gets whole. I mean, gets healed. Scripture says healed. Okay. Fast forward, we are year 18, 19. Everybody done left me. Now I got some new folk. I'm going to start adding up stuff. And I'm going to start doing stuff like this. I ain't got no time to be close to y'all. <laughs> to your point about rolling. If 
If I know that's the door. You, but you know what the problem is? Misery love company. You know, I'm, I'm proud. Look, he got a problem with his foot. She got a problem with her arm. And I got a problem with my head. I'm trying to say it so you can identify the conditions. I'm busy prophesying to his feet. He prophesying to my head. We both prophesying to her. That's how it happened in the church. We conjugate around weaker people to make us look like we strong. Shh, the devil is a lie. I ain't got nothing to say to y'all. Uh. Because by year 18, I done figured out a plan. Knock on the door, G. You come on. No, no, but hold on. Go back one second because I'm just anointed today. Did y'all see what he did? Did you see what he did? And this is, this, is where, this is where I commend him, and this is what we do. But even in me commending him, I have to bring light to it. Okay? The rules of the engagement is the first one that gets in gets whole. See, the, the, the black church taught us to be what? Compassionate. Yeah. Who seen what he did when I said, come on? No, no, he looked at her. Did, did, did you not look at her? Because in his mind, let's make a break too. No, y'all talking about ladies first. And listen, I'm trying to get to this water. Ain't no ladies first. Ooh, ladies first. Ladies. No ladies first. Is that Leah? You see, 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 in the, in, the, in the church, we busy trying to help everybody else while we broken. So while I commend the intent in this season of power, I got to get to the door, baby. Because it's been 18 years and I've been in this condition. You ought to be, you, broken people ought to make you itch by now. So where am I? I'm broken. Now at least by now, I got a home health aid. <laughs> yeah. One of the sisters in the church told me how I could cheat my way to get some benefits. Because, <laughs> you know, we ain't helping people get whole. We helping them get checks. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, knock again, G. Now, I'm trying to get up enough strength to trip them. <laughs> and it still don't work. I'm going to figure out something. Am I talking to anybody? I'm going to figure out something. We had a great time together. Please don't take this person. But I got to get mine. <laughs> I'm going to find a way. Knock on, the, knock on the door, G. That if I can't move, I'm going to at least find a way to stay right, right here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to wedge myself in. Yeah. So you can't, you, when you come to get me at this stage, you, you push me and I got the fall out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to put my weight on it. Because you know when your dead weight is heavier. Yeah. I'm going to lead up against, I'm, I'm paralyzed so I really ain't supposed to be moving. No, come on, come here, sweetie. I'm gonna sit a whole year right here by the water. Now, if you want to get to the water, you gotta do one of two things. You can't pull me to you, because I'm gonna fall on you, and ain't neither one of us gonna get to the water. Hallelujah. So now you got a choice to make. Do I suffer for another year and push him out so that the pathway is now free? Do I push him out the way and I suffer for another year so that I can get what I need to get from God? 
or do I remain here with a blockage that's keeping me from what I need to get? I'd rather push you to make you free in this season to know that my time is coming. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, 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 and I don't, I'm, 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 I haven't even got to the crux of the message, and I, I'll pick it up next Sunday. But, but I had to lay foundation because we are mishandling the church. The church is not a place to make us emotionally high. I don't, I, this is not the trap house. Now you don't come here just to get a high. Then leave and come back again. That's, that's what the world sees as church. Church is the place where people should come broken and get whole. We should be able to love on people. Listen, and when you, and when you get whole, and I don't want to get into the, the part next week, but when you get whole, the Holy Ghost does stuff that I ain't got to teach you. Thank you. There's a difference in being healed and being whole. Are y'all with me today? So, so I'll pick it up next week. Uh, but but we, we, we've got a purpose in our minds that, that, that at this stage in my life, I need to get what I need to get from God. Most of us have been scarred by the old church. And we got to stop trying to help everybody else, and we can't even help ourselves. No shade, no disrespect. I'm just, I'm just giving you what God has given me for, for, for today. Even when you fly, who, who, who flies? I love to fly. I'll be the first one on the plane. Where my wife at? I'll be the first one on the plane. I get pre board I get on before the wheelchairs and everything. Excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. You want me to push you? Come on. And I get on that plane and all them people be watching. Good morning, good morning. How you doing? Good morning. Excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. I go right to the back seat. They be like, why don't you be the first one on? And the last one, I go to the last one. Because my name is Bobby Brown. That's my prerogative. <laughs> But when you fly, what do they tell you? In the event of an emergency, in the event of turbulence, and the cabin loses pressure, the oxygen mask will drop down from the ceiling. Right? Are y'all with me? What, 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 is, what does she say? Put yours on first before you help someone else. And then what's the next thing? Even if you don't see the bag inflate, know that the oxygen is in fact flowing. Even if it don't look like it's working out, you got to know that all things work together. We busy trying to help folk put their mask on. And you ain't got one on. You trying to help everybody else and you broke it. No, in this season, don't help nobody but yourself. Figure out a way. Because y'all not going to make me feel like my church ain't got power. Folk don't even come to this church on a regular, get blessed being connected to this church. You just busy talking to a bunch of halt, withered, broke, impotent folk. Misery loves company. Iron sharpen iron. In, in this season, in this season of our lives, you should purpose to be around something that's going to make me better than what I am. Y'all quiet. Y'all quiet. Because y'all like, y'all like being the head honcho. The H-N-I-C. Burn me up. Solomon, burn me up, church folk. They get supervisory position. Not all of them, because I got some supervisors in, in my church right now that, that, that act right. But I'm talking about some of these church folk to get these positions and know you ain't got no, 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 no authority at home, ain't got no authority at church, but you want to run around and, and on your job 
like you the, like you the president. No, you just happen to be the token. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Affirmative action. You a quota meter. That's what you is. They got a quota to meet. God wants to make us whole. But he can't make you whole. Can you put another scripture back up? I'm sorry. You can't be whole long as you're giving responses and lies to the question that's being asked. Everybody know you're lying, but you. You can't be healed. You can't be whole when you don't even realize who you're talking to. Some of us in here, we've got to ask God to deliver us. Stop trying to, stop try, I said it last Sunday. You, 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 you want to practice, become a doctor. You want to practice, become a lawyer. Be a dentist, be a, you know, you want to, you want to practice. We don't practice. We don't say I'm going down to Bishop Cannon's practice in Harrington. You say we're going down to the church. You don't practice on people. Practice on yourself. The advice you're giving people, ask the question, would you take this advice if somebody gave it to you? Because some of y'all, the advice y'all giving, I, I know you don't take it for yourself. Would you be made whole? People in this world are hungry for a right relationship with God. Grieved my heart the other night when I had to look at that. I didn't have to look at the video of the young boy in uh, Memphis. And then to find out they all black. Brothers. Brothers. Then to find out uh, 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 most of them was in the same fraternity. We're not going to call the fraternity names. We're not going to do that. I still don't know why the young man got pulled over. Drugs. Reckless drugs. You pull me over reckless driving. I'm going to keep on driving reckless till I get to some light. Sean, because you don't know. And folk, and folk wonder, Mother Walker, why I don't go nowhere by myself. I lost seven pounds last week. But I'm, but I'm still a big, bald-headed black man in America. I fit the criteria. I, I, I can be to a stranger intimidating. And those that know me know I'm just a soft as drugstore cotton. Don't push me. Don't push me. If I'm not if I'm not with somebody in my vehicle, I'm on the phone. Because none of us know. And see, y'all women, y'all women don't know how good y'all got it. Y'all don't have to worry about getting nervous when red and blue lights get behind you. Ho 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 hush. Hush. Hush up, all y'all, for real, hush, hush. Cause y'all might get nervous, but I'm not on the level of a black man. So, so don't minimize, don't minimize a black man's condition in this, in this world. Don't do that, don't do that. And this ain't shade. Most y'all in here make more than the man you with. Don't do that. Most y'all in here, most y'all women in here got 
better opportunities than the man you with. Don't do that. So you don't know what a black man in this, in this world got to go through. You don't know the pressure that we got to deal with some of y'all sister soldier mouths. You wanting to brag on social media about how much you make. No, hold up. Hold up. Race is what race is. But you don't know the pressure of a black man in America. Man trying to start a business and go to the bank to try to get a loan. And just because they read your name, ain't, ain't my fault my mama gave me the name she gave me. Deny. You go in there talking about my credit of 380 and they give you $100,000. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's rough for us all. But statistics show there are more opportunities for an African-American woman than there is for a man. I get nervous. I ain't even talking about red and blue. I get nervous. Blue, white. I, I, we was coming through Camden the other day. And the, and the, and the um, paramedic was coming. She said, what are you doing? Zoom! I don't want no smoke. I don't want no problem. State police was over there at, in the corner. I started to pull over and say, did you see me pull over? <laughs> we need God more today. Got a, if you got a black man in your life, don't wait till they die to love them. Don't get no, if I die, I don't want to die, but if I die, don't get no t shirt with my face on it. Tell me, we sure didn't love Bishop. No, you didn't. I called you, wanted to talk to you while I was driving down 95. You ain't answer. You ain't love me. It's rough out here, y'all. And, and God has been dealing with me for a few months now. Like, all this shouting to make you happy, we done with that. We're going to preach. We're going to praise to make you whole, to make you what God wants you to be. Solomon, who told you to wear a suit today? You're a grown man, ain't you? Who, who told you again? I like the way you said it the first time. Myself, who are you talking to? <laughs> Nobody had a meeting with the brothers and said, hey, brothers, if y'all going to be coming to this church, I need you to wear a suit. Nobody pulled him to the side and said, hey, if you're going to come to Pine Pray, you got to wear a suit. That's what the old church used to do. We're going to preach the word. We're going to live the word. And if you ain't preaching the word and living the word, y'all members, tell me if my leaders ain't doing it so I can check the word. Because you might not be a fruit inspector, but I, I darn sure am. <laughs> See, when you got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost to catch it. And let me say this for those of y'all that don't wear no suit. It don't mean you got to wear a suit. Don't feel like you got to go out here and get clothes that you don't feel comfortable on your body. Come as you are. Now, let me say this real quick to that scripture. Come as you are has nothing to do with what you wear on the outside. But come as you are means how your state of mind and how your heart is. So in other words, when folk come in here off the streets, leave them alone. If we're not going to love them with the love of Christ, mind your business. M-Y-O-B. Matter of fact, I don't know who making t-shirts this season and who ain't. But give me a t-shirt with M-Y-O-B on it. You know, y'all change businesses like y'all change undergarments. I don't you ain't got no LLC, y'all don't pay taxes, so it ain't even really a business. It's like a hobby. And if you ain't paying taxes, I'm going to call you out just like I call sinners out. How about that? You want to be a boss, do you? But you don't pay taxes. The Bible says, I got Bible. The Bible said, render under Caesar would belong to Caesar. Well, you don't pay tithes, so I know you ain't going to render under Caesar would belong to Caesar. So you just don't give to nobody, and you wonder why stuff ain't happening for you. You don't give to the government. You don't give to God. You, oh, you just want to keep it all for yourself. 
this house will be the house of security. This house will be a refuge of people who don't want church as normal. Now, for, for those of you that are more traditional, I ain't, go, I ain't done away with my traditional ways. I still believe in good praise. We're not doing, we're not doing, we're not changing our church to having dark church. We ain't have no sexy church. Turn off the lights. We ain't gonna have no smoking mirrors. Ain't gonna be no smoke coming up from the, you know, ain't gonna be that. Did y'all see the video the other week? The white lady, I'm sorry if any white folk watching, but she was white. Mother over, you, you be on Facebook. Did you see the video of the white woman? She was in church prophesying, right? Prophesying to this black guy and his wife. And she said, ooh, 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 God's going to do it. Ooh, uh, uh, I feel my feet getting hot. I feel my feet getting hot. I see gold. I see gold. In it. She took her shoes off and started kicking. And you seen gold, just gold glitter coming from her feet. I can't say what I said to you. I can't say what I said. But I said, this is a shame that we've turned church into gimmicks. You're going to put, your, you're gonna put a, 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 a ounce of gold glitter in your shoe and then take your shoe out and kick it. Like God is letting gold come out underneath your toenail. Your toenails is dirty. Ain't no gold up underneath there. You can't even get no copper coming from up underneath them toenails. I, did they get the did they get the graphic they, they got the huh yes can they put the graphic up I'm done we great printer y'all go listen man you look good looking at though? Yeah, he's looking at souls coming. Put it together. Why my hair look all distorted? Oh, okay. I was asking. I, I, I believe God, I said it before, and I'm going to say, I believe this year, my prayer, one of the prayers that I have for this house is that we double in membership. Because people are hungry. People are tired of fluff in church. Y'all, y'all stay out of people's business. That's one of the things that has hurt the church. If you, if relationship is formed by as a byproduct of church, that's one thing. Matter of fact, when people come to church, stop calling them sis and bruh. Because sis and bruh done got a lot of folk in trouble. Call them Mr. and Mrs. Call them what you call them when you go to work. You don't ask Miss Johnson to go home with her. You don't ask Mr. Roberts to go home. You, sis, where we going to eat, sis? Bruh, what we going to do this weekend, bruh? No, Mr. Cannon, what are we doing? Nothing. <laughs> Folk are hungry. And, I, and I, I believe God that God, through the power of the Holy Ghost, is going to heal us and make us whole and in making us whole he's going to equip us to do the work that Jesus commanded for his disciples to do somebody needs what you have and you might feel like you ain't got much because the church led you to believe that but all of you have something all of you have a such might not have silver you might not have gold but everybody in here has a such I ain't going to put her on the spot today, but I'm going to start putting her on the spot. I'm going to activate her such. Have y'all ain't never heard that Shawnee's pray? And I ain't talking about that do 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 I ain't talking about that. She be praying. Randa baka shata. I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> we don't activate people. We don't activate people because we make people feel like they don't have nothing to be activated. Not in this season. 
I'm not doing everything. I'm not doing everything. And y'all going to ask God to deliver you from yourself. You? You going to ask? You, you got something to say? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. All of us need to be delivered from ourselves. Somebody say, why? Because every time somebody brings you correction, you get a spirit of offense. And correction don't come to offend you. Correction comes to make you better. Who he think he talking to? Who she thinks she talking to? Well, I don't do it like the other person. Nobody asked you to do it like nobody else. We asked you to do it like God gave it to you to do. See how easy that is? Oh, we great grow this church. And we're going to grow the church not so I can brag on social media about how many, when folk ask me, how many folk you running, dog? Hey, well, I ain't running nobody. I run my wife, but I don't run. <laughs> That's what they ask when we be out eating. Mm -hmm. How many you running, dog? And then I ask them back, how many you running? Don't answer that. Because you is running some of them in your church. <laughs> Brag. I ain't got time to be bragging about people. I want to see people whole in Jesus. That's all Jesus did. So I'm done right there. We can pray and let y'all go. But in this season of our lives, and if you don't like it, hey, this ain't your cup of tea, hey. I need to see it anyway. March, we're going to two services. Some of y'all to hang out on Saturday nights. I got to give y'all opportunity to get to church on time. <laughs> In Jesus' name. Why, Bishop, we going to two services? That's too much preaching on you. Hush your mouth. I've been going down Laurel preaching twice on Sundays for a whole year, and you didn't say nothing. I didn't ask you to come to both services. See, this kind of stuff you got to answer to people today when when you hear stuff in the spirit. Why are we going to services? Why are we going to services? Well, we're going to two services because if I believe God by faith, he's going to double the membership. Ain't enough seats in here for this one service. So if I believe God going to do something, I got to start making room by faith that he's going to do it. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Ask Brother Steve. Who else? Who else came to the first service? When we said, Everybody said the 8 o'clock service. Everybody said I was crazy going to an 8 o'clock service. Don't nobody do no 8 o'clock service down here. First couple Sundays, it was like two or three people. Wasn't it, Brother Steve? Wasn't it? I was talking about y'all. Then, then y'all started coming. Man, there was more people coming to 8 o'clock service. Came to 11 o'clock service. 8 o'clock was jumping. Folk would come in here and get what they need to get from God. I want an hour of power. Go to golfing. Go to his food line. Go where they need to go. Go down to the beach and go shopping. But they gave God what would do God. In the old 11 o'clock party hour. <laughs> Three hours later. Ain't nobody changed, but we had that good church. Shouting and dancing, and tears turning over. But we had good church. What did he preach about, man? And I don't know, but we had good church. <laughs> the power of God hit us. We was laid out in the spirit. Like we had good church on Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock was good, wasn't it, Brother Steve? Hit that thing for one hour. One hour. And when they leave, they grab their little donut and coffee and go about their business. Then I found out. Then I found out someone was going up to the diner, conjugating. I started to go sneak up on them one and say, hey! Order me some scrambled eggs and bacon. God going to do it in this season. God, going to, God, we thank you today for what our ears have heard and our hearts have felt. Trust and pray, God, something has been said that's entered seed into the lives of people. Make us who in what you called us to be. Help us to realize in the season, God, we don't have to wait for someone else to get what they need to get before we can get ours. But you are so gracious enough of a God to give it to all of us at the same time. I pray for that man today, that woman today that's at a place in their life where they desire more from you. Be to them, give to them what they have a desire. Have your way, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Not only are we asking you to heal us of our past hurts, but through those hurts, God, make us whole. Because it's through our hurt and our pain that you bring about deliverance. 
then when you deliver us, we can use that as a testimony to help someone else. Your word says we are overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Without an issue for you to solve, God, we would have no testimony. So we ask you now to touch us from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Meet every need, O oh God, in our lives. In the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone, the God, that can hear my voice, God. It's not for nobody to know what they need, but it's for them to know that someone is, in fact, praying for them. Hear their prayer, O oh God, and hearken to their call. We pray, God, now that you will meet every need in their life. God, let us be prepared to leave this place, but not from your presence. Go with us this week. Let this week, God, be better than the last. In the name of Jesus. And bring us back to this place at the hour we're appointed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all, and we'll see you on Thursday night.